Hey guys, Adam here with AmericanMuscle.com and today we're taking a quick look at and installing the MP Concepts Performance Pack Style Rear Spoiler in the Primed Finish, available for the 2015 and newer Fastback Mustang. You should be checking this out if you're a fan of the Performance Pack S550 Rear Spoiler and your S550 didn't come with a spoiler or maybe had the base model style and you're looking for that upgrade. This is more of a race or performance pack inspired design, something that's more of a pedestal spoiler rather than a flush mount one. Now typically the base model GT and EcoBoost would come with the flush mount spoiler. It's almost a ducktail, very flush with the trunk lid and the fender here when it lips over. This guy with the performance pack comes up several inches to give you that more aerodynamic look. Now this one is a whole lot more aggressive and it's very OEM styled. So if you're a fan of that OEM look, this is a great way to go without going to some of the more unique or in your face aftermarket options. Now out of the box, this guy's made of an ABS plastic, a very common material used in most exterior styling parts, including some of the factory components. So it's extremely durable, it's UV resistant, it's fade resistant. It's something that's gonna last a long while, just like your factory one would. Right out of the box, this guy is primed, as I mentioned earlier, which means it's not painted, but it's ready for paint. You can install it right out of the box like we are here on our customer car. In that case, just keep in mind, it's gonna be a flat matte black finish, no prime, no clear coat on top of it. So you may see some manufacturing imperfections. I would recommend taking it to a local paint shop to get custom painted or paint match to your OEM color. But again, out of the box, if you're a fan of the matte black primed finish, you can install it as is like you see here. Now this guy is gonna run you right around 175 bucks, making it a pretty affordable upgrade for the rear end, especially for guys who didn't come with a factory spoiler. Now, if you own a performance pack and your factory performance pack style spoiler is damaged in need of replacement, this is gonna be a great cost-effective way to get that same OE style at the rear without spending bigger bucks from a direct Ford replacement. Three out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. It does require drilling regardless of whether or not your vehicle came with a factory spoiler. If you're going from the factory base model spoiler or no spoiler at all, you're gonna be drilling new holes. Now, if your factory spoiler was a performance pack, you may be able to reuse your factory holes. You may need to make them a little bit bigger depending on how the sizing matches up. Now, the drilling does beef up that difficulty, so you wanna have a drill and a drill bit set on deck. We're gonna start at about an eighth of an inch working our way up to as big as a half inch hole for some of them and about a quarter inch hole for the rest. Now I'll walk you through that entire process here. It's gonna take a lot of patience, about two hours worth of time from start to finish in the driveway at home, depending on whether or not you have to uninstall a factory option. I'll walk you through it, let's get started. Tools used in the install include a drill and drill bits, ratchet, extension, and 10 millimeter deep socket, Phillips head screwdriver, Sharpie, center punch is recommended, some painter's tape, needle nose pliers, clean microfiber, and a soap and water mixture in a squirt bottle. First step here, we're gonna start on our table. We've got our spoiler face down on some foam padding that it came in with the packaging just to protect the finish here. We have to install a couple of the back end plates in order to get it installed on our trunk lid. I'm gonna start here with the center piece that's gonna bolt down just like that in the middle. You're gonna grab a couple of Phillips head screws included in the kit, a Phillips head screwdriver, and I'm gonna recommend some tape. The idea behind the tape is you wanna tape the screw to the screwdriver tip just because you have to go down pretty deep into this little panel here and it's just gonna fall off if you don't have it taped together. So that's gonna help things out. So let's do that next. All right, so I've got my screw just taped to the end of my screwdriver just enough to keep it from falling. I'm gonna feed this guy in and screw it in place. Once it's screwed, you should be able to pull that tape off. And if you need to, at some point, you can go back in with some pliers to pull the excess tape out. All right, at this point, guys, you just wanna pull the rubber caps off of the threaded holes there on all three. Next, we can put these end caps in place just like that using the same method, but we don't need the tape this time because it's a shallow enough hole.
All right, once you know those guys are tightened down, you can grab the end caps to cover up the screw holes. Okay, repeat that on the other side. Next, we have to put the 3M strips over each of the caps there. I'm gonna grab an alcohol wipe and just clean off the area first to make sure that that 3M gets a really good bond. We wanna remove any dirt and dust or manufacturing dust or anything like that from the surface. Repeat this process with an alcohol wipe on each of the surfaces and then let it dry and we can put our 3M on. All right, peel off the backing, not the red. The red's gonna contact the vehicle. Peel off that tan backing there and then you wanna carefully feed this over those studs and start at one of the corners to make sure it lines up properly and set this guy into place. Put firm, even pressure all around it to make sure it gets a good bond. Repeat that on each one of the surfaces back here. All right, next up, you wanna just pop your trunk. We have to remove the trunk liner on the inside. There are two rubber stops up top, push pins all around, and then we can just pop this latch cover off. These guys will twist straight off. All right, I'm just gonna set them inside the trunk for safekeeping. From here, we can grab a panel removal tool to pop those off. All right, for this guy, we're just gonna pinch and pull off. You wanna feed the emergency trunk release through there and set this aside. All right, at this point, you wanna unfold or unroll the template here, and I find it easier to cut it out just so you can see how it lines up. With the helping hand of a friend, you can help line this guy up. Once you know exactly where you like it, make sure it's even on both sides. You wanna tape down the corners and the edge. You want this edge to be sort of flush with the curve here right above the taillights, all the way around, grab some painter's tape and tape it down. All right, so at this point, you can see with the spoiler perfectly in place on our template that the template marks are just a little bit off. They're not even on both sides. So with that said, I'm gonna keep it exactly where I know I want it, grab a Sharpie, and I'm just gonna mark the circle around the studs so that we know where we need to drill. All right, and this is where that stud's gonna go. Same thing for each of the studs. This next part's not required, but I definitely recommend it. It's gonna help guide your drill bit. Grab a center punch. We're gonna go straight to the middle of those circles we made with our Sharpie and mark it. That's gonna help guide our initial pilot hole so it's not dancing around, scratching the paint. All right, repeat that for each one. All right, I'm gonna start here with a smaller 1 8 drill bit. We'll obviously have to work our way up to the size. I'm unsure of what the size is at this point, but as we get larger and larger, we'll be able to test the stud. All 
right, next up I'm jumping up to a 730 second. At this point, we have enough of the holes drilled that we know exactly where the holes are, so we can peel off this template. And then I'm gonna put painter's tape over the holes. That way, if the drill bit, for whatever reason, God forbid, bounces, it can protect the paint. That way you can protect that from the scratches of the actual bit itself. But at this point, we can get rid of that template. All right, after you test fit your spoiler and you know that the holes are good, you can peel off your tape here. And if you wanna clean up the holes, you absolutely can do so. Next step would be to clean off the entire trunk lid here, where the 3M is gonna go underneath of the spoiler to make sure it gets a good bond, and then we'll tighten everything down. All right, next up, I'm gonna use a soap and water mixture in my squirt bottle. I'm just gonna wet this guy here with a clean microfiber. You wanna make sure you're getting off all of the debris from the metal shavings of the drilling of the holes. That way you're not dragging metal across the paint that will scratch and damage your trunk lid. We've already taken care of that, so at this point, I'm just cleaning off with the soap and water mixture. All right, let this guy dry off and we'll be able to move forward. Now we've already taken care of the other two, but with this last one here, you wanna peel off the red backing on that 3M and have a helping hand to help guide this on the trunk. All right, my buddy Sage is gonna help me guide this on just so we don't have the studs dancing around on the paint. Now when you put pressure, don't put pressure on the top, put pressure on the bottom of that bracket. Boom, just like that. All right, so we wanna put pressure on that 3M, making sure it sticks, and now we can bolt it down from the underside. Open up your trunk. On each corner, there are grommets covering up the open holes there. Peel that guy off and set that down. You have access to the stud on the inside. Do the same thing on each corner. Next, I have a 10 millimeter socket on an extension, and I have my nut taped to the end of the socket. It's gonna help us feed it onto the stud. All right, so we're doing this just like we did earlier on the table. Get that to tighten down. I'm gonna tighten it all the way down with this just to make sure it's really on there. You don't wanna risk dropping the nut in the trunk lid. All right, with that on, you can pull straight back. And if the tape doesn't come off, grab some pliers and pull that out. Focusing on the center ones, they're a lot easier to get to, so grab your nut. Thread those on by hand. Again, just really be careful not to drop the nut in. Make sure it catches that threading. Go all the way down by hand. Do the same thing for the one on the left. Perfect, now we can tighten them down. All right, from here we can use our extension in the 10 deep socket to tighten down these guys. I can take the extension off and do the middle. All right, now we can put the trunk liner back on, put things back together, and we're good to go. Next, we can put our grommets back in place here on the open holes. Remember to feed the emergency release back through the trunk liner. Clip it on up here. 
using the trunk latch cover. Now we can put all these guys back on. Finally, bump stops. From here, you can shut your trunk and you're good to go. That's gonna wrap up my review and install for the MP Concepts Performance Pack style rear spoiler and the primed finish available for the 15 and newer Mustang. Get yours right here at AmericanMuscle.com.